All right, so today we're going to be answering the question, is Windows Movie Maker still usable in 2019? Now, Windows Movie Maker was discontinued in January of 2017, which is over two years ago. So it's no longer available for download through the Microsoft Store, though you can still find it if you're willing to do enough digging on sketchy websites. Now, I actually have a lot of experience using Windows Movie Maker. I used it for a lot of the early videos on both of my YouTube channels. And really from what I remember, it's not that bad. Now I will say I was messing with this yesterday and I had an older version of it and that older version did not work very well. So this is like version 16.4, something like that. Um, version 16.4 dot all of this other stuff. The other one was version 15 point something and it was from Windows Essentials 2011, I think. And this is Windows Essentials 2012, which should be the latest version. Now, I believe that the last update for Windows Movie Maker was way back in 2014 or something like that, according to Wikipedia. So in reality here, we're working with software that's essentially five years old. And it's definitely going to have some limitations compared to uh, modern software. Software. But anyway, I'm going to attempt to edit one of my videos using Windows Movie Maker. So I've got these clips here. I'm just going to go ahead and drag those all into here. And it says Movie Maker is preparing your files. Movie Maker prefers files to make them easier to edit. Please wait. Depending on the number and size of files on the project, this may take a few minutes. And it probably will take... Uh, a fair amount of time. So as this does its thing, we'll go ahead and take a look around here and see what we can do. Uh, over here we have the different sharing options. So we can share it to OneDrive, Facebook, YouTube, uh, Vimeo, and Flickr. Yeah. Now back when I used Windows Movie Maker, I did try to export things directly to YouTube and I could never get it to ever work. So I always had to come over here to the save movie thing and the first thing that I'm going to point out is a limitation here. So I just wanted to create a custom setting and I'm going to make one that will match the video file that I have here. If I type a number in here, the first thing you're gonna notice is gonna t pop up with this incorrect value thing, enter a number between 64 and 1920. Now this is the resolution number, and similarly here on the height, we have to have a number between 64 and 1080. Essentially boils down to, that means that the maximum resolution that you can export is 1080p. You cannot export 4K video. Uh, we can set our bitrate. We can actually set the bitrate really high. We can go up to 135 megabits a second, which is kind of ridiculous. My camera shoots in about 30, which is what I'm going to set it to. And my camera is also uh, 59.94 frames a second. And the max frame rate here is 60, I believe. And we can do a few different audio formats, not a lot. I believe my camera shoots in 160 kbits a second. 40 kilohertz stereo audio. So I'm basically just trying to match what my camera does. And these would have been about the settings that I used back in the day when I used Windows Movie Maker as my only editing software. Of course, now I've transitioned to using Adobe products for my video editing software, and I haven't touched Windows Movie Maker in about four years. So we're gonna see if I can still edit a video using it. All right, so let's just take a look at what else we can do with the software. We can rotate clips, remove clips, select all clips. We have these auto movie themes, which basically just apply like a title and transitions between your clips. Uh, we can add titles, captions, credits. We can do webcam video. We can record narrations. We can pull a snapshot out of the video, which would be like a freeze frame. We can add music, and then this would be the like import button, essentially, which I did just by dragging the clips in, but uh, you can do that either way. And apparently we just have you know, copy-paste sort of features. You can do different animations. These are all gonna be transitions, and then these are different pan and zoom effects. Visual effects, I'm pretty sure these are basically just like filters. So we can do various things with mixing audio. We can also change between widescreen and standard uh, aspect ratios. Of course, nowadays, 16 by 9 basically is the standard. Our view tab is going to allow us to zoom in and out of our timeline. I'm not sure what Windows Movie Maker actually calls this, but I'm going to call it a timeline because that's what it is on most other video editing softwares. That's what it's referred to as. We can change our thumbnail size to be 
uh, however big we want that to look. This is all going to be personal preference. I believe waveforms is going to be the audio, which is going to be very important for the kind of stuff that I edit, so I'm going to definitely have that on. And then we have editing tools, so we can do uh, audio fade in and fade out, so we can do, apparently we can change background colors. Speed and duration, uh, we can split clips, set start and end points, and apparently we can even do video stabilization, which is uh, interesting. So another thing I will mention is that Windows Movie Maker does technically have a replacement now, and it's built into the Windows 10 Photos app and you're supposed to be able to use that as a video editor. I haven't messed with it very much. I may do that as a separate video, but there is technically a replacement for Windows Movie Maker. But I do believe even though that Windows Movie Maker is essentially five years old now, uh, Movie Maker is still more powerful than the built-in piece of software that Windows 10 has. But on that same note, there are going to be a lot of other free video editing packages that you can download that are going to be more powerful than Windows Movie Maker. And also, you don't have to go through sketchy sites to download them. All right, so everything is now ready to go. So I'm just going to go ahead and start editing this, and we'll see uh, what we can do. Uh, my plus and minus keys do zoom in and out of the timeline just like they do on the Adobe products. Uh, Spacebar, of course, is going to pause and play the video. One thing that I do know is missing is that you can't uh, just click on the edge of one of these clips and uh, drag it over to trim it. You have to use these set start and end point uh, commands, which I think have shortcuts. Yep, I for set start point and O for set endpoint, which I believe is the same as uh, Adobe Premiere as well, but uh, Adobe Premiere uses those two things a little bit differently. Really, this experience shouldn't be too bad. I can see the audio waveform, which is the most important thing for my editing. I'm going to go ahead and maybe make these just a little bit bigger as well so, we can, so I can see this better. And we can also split clips by hitting the M key which is quite useful. Okay, one thing that I am finding annoying about this is that it's quite difficult to grab this little line to uh, move it around to find where you're at in the video for some reason. And I keep accidentally grabbing the clip to move the clip, and when you let go of it, it resets that uh, marker to the beginning of the clip, which is uh, becoming kind of annoying. But of course, that would just take some getting used to to uh, really precisely put your mouse over this guy and drag it around. All right, so now I'm gonna do a bit of editing that's not just pure uh, cutting clips together. So I'm going to take this clip, we're going to speed it up to uh, 8x speed, and we'll see what this looks like. All right, so with this set at 8x speed, it seems to have muted the audio, which is fine, because the audio is gonna be kind of useless anyway at this point. But it is actually playing the preview back really smoothly, which is pretty impressive considering that I'm running this on a little uh, dual-core i3 laptop. Of course, I'm also recording the screen in the background, so uh, you can see the CPU specs here. But this is a not very powerful machine, and it's keeping up with this just fine. All right, so I want to add music over this sped up part. So we're going to go to the beginning of the clip, and in this Home tab, we can go to Add Music, and we're going to add music at the current point. And we're going to find uh, whatever song we want to use. I'm going to use this guy. And then we should have music over it. And I think if I come up to the end here, and I select that music track, which maybe already is selected, but we're going to hit the O key, which is the set out point. And there we have it. We uh, trim the music down to just be over this one clip. And I should also be able to come in here and make a fade out for that clip. Oh, here we go. We have to go to Music Tools and then select uh, Fade Out in the Music Tools tab. 
All right, so that worked out fairly slick once I figured out where the uh, tab was for it. And really that wasn't too hard to add in at all. So let's try another thing. I need to add in a caption here. So I'm just gonna click that. And apparently we can just go ahead and type in what we want. And we should be able to select this and change uh, various things about it. So we can change our font size. We can change the font type. Let's see if that's impact, which is what I would normally use for something like this. And we should be able to move this little box around. Box is a little bit big. You can resize that apparently. Yep, there we go. And there we have it. All right, so we can also add an outline, which is what would normally be called a stroke, I believe. We can change the color of that to black. And that's pretty much exactly what I would normally do with Adobe Premiere. So that looks pretty nice. And I should be able to move this clip around, I think, so I can move it back there for an example. It's class D, but uh, anyway, basically this. And we can change our text duration. I'm gonna change it down to five seconds. Okay, so performance-wise, I have noticed this thing stuttering every once in a while, and this is something that I do remember with Windows Movie Maker, is that sometimes when you go to hit the space bar, it will say that it's playing over here, but it won't actually start playing. It's doing this very occasionally on this computer, and I do remember using different computers and having a much worse experience with it in the past. I do think most modern computers should run it just fine and not have too many issues with it. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and take a look and see what we can do for transitions. So if you go to the animations tab, and there's a lot of different transitions that you can choose from. Uh, I'll just scroll through it real quick. But as you can see, there is a bunch of different ones that you can choose from. And we're still going, and that's the end of it. So if I go back up here, I want to use the blur through black transition, I believe is what they call it. Also, if you mouse over these, you can see a preview of what it'll look like. So if I play through this now, one problem that I do have with this transition is that it's transitioning both the video and the audio, and I really don't want it to be transitioning the audio. All right, so there is a simple way around that, and that is to change the duration down to a smaller value. Normally I set my transition duration to half a second anyway with Adobe Premiere, and when you set it to half a second, you can't really tell that it's transitioning the audio because it's such a short duration. So that pretty much fixes that, and I am now ready to go ahead and export this video. So I'm going to use the setting that we made earlier, the 1080p 5994 at 30 megabits a second, and we can just save this as uh, whatever we want to call it. And we have two options here for our save as type. We can do an MPEG-4 H.264 video file, which is a .mp4 file, of course. Now, MP4 is still a widely used video standard today. Windows Media Video File, or .wmv, is not a very widely used format anymore, and I wouldn't really recommend exporting videos with that format. So we can save it as an MP4. We'll click on Save, and we'll get this 
save movie box that pops up. All right, so with that done, we get this nice little pop-up box that says you can play your video file now or open the folder that it's in. So we'll go ahead and play that video file and check it out. All right, so that looks pretty good. I'm perfectly happy with that video and I will upload that to YouTube as I normally would. So Windows Movie Maker, at least for me, only has a couple of big limitations that are going to cause issues. One is that it can't do 4K video, which is kind of important in 2019, especially considering that most modern cell phones will record in 4K. And the other thing that I can't do with Windows Movie Maker that I don't use on every video but is really nice to have occasionally is the ability to stack multiple video clips on top of each other so you can do like picture in picture or have multiple videos running on the same screen or overlay images on top of the video. I don't believe that there's a way to do that with Windows Movie Maker, but honestly, other than that, it's a pretty usable piece of video editing software. So if you guys want me to check out some better free alternatives to Windows Movie Maker, go ahead and leave suggestions for that down in the comments below. And something else I'll probably end up doing in another video is messing with the current replacement for Windows Movie Maker that exists in Windows 10. But anyway, if you like the video, go ahead and click that like button and consider subscribing and I'll see you in the next video, guys. Bye.